Hello everyone, welcome back. This is chapter 9 and this is part 2 of our thermochemistry chapter. So in this one we're going to look at the flow of energy and how work or heat can go in and out of a system and we're going to look at our what I call the box. Okay, we're going to have a box. This is our system. Everything outside the box is the surroundings. Okay, or some people say the universe. All right, so we're looking at a reaction going on inside this box, and so we're going to look at energy flowing in and out or work done by the box. And the overall net change of that is going to be something called internal energy. So the first law of thermodynamics is the law of conservation of energy and you probably saw the law of conservation of matter well it's, it works exactly the same way you can't create or destroy energy you can only change the form and thermodynamics is the study of energy and how we convert it from one form to another so one thing that you keep in mind since you can't create it or destroy it the total is going to remain the same so we say that it's conserved, okay? It's conserved because it remains the same. So if I change the energy inside my system, the same exact change with the opposite sign has to happen outside my system. So if I increase energy in my system, then that same magnitude of energy has to decrease in the surroundings because that way my net effect is zero change. So the system is the part of the universe that we're studying, whether it's in our beaker or in my, our flask or in a room, whatever you're studying. Then the surroundings are everything else in the universe. Okay, and we say universe because that's kind of what we're looking at. Okay, the and beyond, okay? Um, thermo, we study the energy as it goes in and out of the system, how we use it, how we take it from the surroundings and, and that kind of thing. So energy that flows from the system to the surroundings is exothermic. And what happens is in our box, if energy flows out of the system to the surroundings, then the energy inside the box goes down, but the energy outside the box goes up. And what we will detect is an increase in temperature. So that's how we tell it's exothermic, because we see an increase in temperature outside the system, okay? Or as it leaves the system, okay? The opposite is true for endothermic. In endothermic, energy will flow into our box. All right, so that's going to increase the energy inside the box, and we have decreased the energy of the surroundings because we stole some of that energy to put it in our system so that we could do whatever we wanted to do. So that's endothermic. And so you're going to see the temperature of your surroundings out here in this case will go down. So that's how you know it's endothermic. So if you detect when you're doing an experiment and you detect an increase in temperature, even if you're stirring your system, that's exothermic because you're measuring the heat as it leaves the system. If the temperature goes down, you are measuring the heat as it's being pulled out of the surroundings and therefore it goes down. The temperature will decrease. So the law of conservation of matter says you can't create it, you can't destroy it. Whatever you start with, you got to finish with. Okay, so whatever you gain or lose in the system is going to be the oppositely gained or lost in the surroundings. So that gives us an overall change in energy, the delta energy of the universe, as a big fat zero because the energy of the system change and the energy of the system's change surroundings is going to equal zero. Okay, so change in energy of the universe is zero and the change in energy of the system plus the change in energy of the surroundings also equals zero. And so we look at that by saying what is the final amount of energy 
minus the initial amount of energy. And energy itself is hard to measure. So a lot of times what we do is we go by the heat and what the heat does. Because that, that you can just use a thermometer to measure that. The internal energy is the sum of all the kinetic and potential energy of everything in the system. And the change in the system depends on the amount of energy in the system at the beginning and at the end because we look at the energy at the final and energy at the initial and whatever that is is that delta E, that change in energy. The other way to look at that is the products minus the reactants. Okay, that also gives you the delta E of the reaction. This is what we call a state function because it doesn't depend on how you get there. It just depends on the beginning and the end. So the analogy for this is if you were going to climb a mountain, this is a state, I'm, 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 I'm giving you an analogy for the state function thing, okay? So the change in altitude from this mountain, we're going to go from the base to the tippy top, and that difference is 10,000 feet. Now, if I'm a really cool, you know, mountaineer, I can take this path, which is the shortest path, and that's going to be five miles, okay? And I'm going to go straight up, clawing and climbing my way to the top. But if for most everybody else, the easier way to get to the top of a mountain is you're going to take a kind of a winding path. Okay, because you're getting taking a little bit easier path up there so you don't kill yourself. Okay, and so that path might take 12 miles. So these guys took five miles and these guys took 12 miles to go from zero to 10,000 feet, but they both went the same difference in altitude. So in a state function, it doesn't matter how long it takes you. It just says you went from 0 to 10,000. So 10,000 minus 0 equals 10,000. That's a state function. Okay? And so that's kind of what we, we look at when we're trying to figure out all of these things. Not where it went, not how it how long it took it to go, but what, what, was, what was the distance, okay? An energy diagram is a way we show the direction of the energy flow, okay? If we have energy from up here going down there, we're showing a negative energy, a decrease in energy, okay? When we do that and we have that negative flow, okay, we are showing that the change in energy is negative, between our reactants and our products, okay? And so when we do that, we have done, we have given off heat because for me to go from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, I have to let go of some energy. And so usually we see that, as I said, in the form of heat. So if I release heat, I'm gonna go back down to that lower energy level. So my heat has decreased in my system, or my energy, and my energy has increased in my surroundings, right? Because energy flowed out of the system. And guess what? In an endothermic process, we're gonna go from a lower energy to a higher energy, okay? So when I go from low to high, I have to, what, take in energy. When I do that, I'm going to have a higher energy level when I get done than I did at the beginning. So my change in energy in my system is going to be positive because I've increased. I took it from the surroundings, so that will decrease. So if reactants have a higher internal energy than the products, that means that the delta E of the system, the change in energy, is negative because energy flows out 
of the system to the surroundings. If reactants have a lower internal energy than the products, the delta E is going to be positive because it flowed into the system from the surroundings. So the internal energy of the system, we're looking at just how much flows in and how much flows out. And what the final number is depends on what was the energy when you started. So if you know what the energy is when you start, then you can say, OK, well, I had this much energy. I lost this much because it flowed out. So it, the beginning energy minus what left is my energy when I get done. OK, does that sound? OK, so you're withdrawing energy and negative and you're or you're putting energy in and depositing that. And so that gives you an idea of what's going on in that system. And that is the second part of thermochemistry introduction.